there we are live good afternoon good morning good evening wherever you're joining us from you are welcome to the baby dust show i'm so delighted to have you here if you're just joining in and you can hear me loud and clear please click the how the wow button click the heart button say hello chica tell me where you are joining in from i would like to know where you're joining in from i'm going to be in the comment section to engage with you yes we are live in this Facebook broadcast, I have a very, 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 very important and special guest with me on set. Today, we'll be sharing with you deep truths on IVF, everything you must know on your journey to make the best of your IVF process. Because the value you're going to get in this broadcast will give you most control over the process and how to improve your chances. If you are meeting for the first time, my name is Chika Samos. I'm a fertility and lifestyle coach. I'm streaming live to you from Lagos, Nigeria. Please click the wow button. Hashtag first timer. If this is the first time you're joining the Baby Does Show, if you're watching the rebroadcast, please hashtag rebroadcast and let me know where you're joining in from. So if you're about to start the intro fertilization, that's the IVF journey. Perhaps you're already on it. You're not alone. It's not a new, <laughs> it's not a new you know, intervention. About one to eight women find need to have this extra help in getting pregnant. But well, if you're ready to start or add to your family and you have tried other fertility options, IVF is a frequently suggested option to have a biological baby. So let's deal with the basics. IVF is a medical you know, procedure in which the egg is fertilized with the sperm, giving you an embryo. It's more like a deep baby seedling. So if this happens outside your body, then the embryo is either frozen or is transferred to the uterus of the woman, which hopefully results in pregnancy. So it comes with a lot of emotions. I need to prepare adequately for it. All right. So the deep truth we're going to be sharing with you today will serve as a guide, you know, to give you and your partner the best chance you're going to have to, you know, have a baby through IVF. If you're just joining in, we're about hitting the accelerator button to start discussing about intro fertilization and how you can improve your chances. So today I'm super delighted to have a special guest on set with me. She's my dear friend. She's my dear sister. And when I thought of this topic, I couldn't think of a better speaker to address it. Today's guest is Dr. Neka Ue. Could you imagine someone this pretty without an English name? She's such a beauty <laughs> inside out. You know, I often tell her, Ne, you're wasting names. I could give you a pretty name every day. You look somewhat like a Natasha or a Stephanie, you know, or some name that you need dictionary to search or to pronounce. <laughs> You know, but when she shared with me the soul in behind the name Neka, it's so touching because the girl child is a blessing, you know, I tell you. So, um, Dr. Neka is a doctorate of business administration, culture and business in her focus and her specialty. So, this strength of a woman has been through a lot and trust me, she looks nothing like what she's been through. She has survived 11 failed ideas. Yes, you heard me. 11. 1, 2, 3, 4. I always say it and I count my fingers. <laughs> So, and you think, what was she thinking, you know, but if you have never really yearned and, you know, wanted the desperacy of a child, you won't understand that you cannot relate. And now that is the inspiration why she established the uh, Angelic with Tosin, which is also in a similar journey to guide and assist ladies in the same path that we're sharing with you today. You know, I have had failed ideas, so I know what it's like. So trust me. Neka has earned the right to speak to you about ideas. Wherever you are in your journey to parenthood, you get immense value from the deep truth, heart to heart. She's going to be sharing from her heart, you know? So tag your friends, ask them to come in here fast because we're sharing immediately, okay? If you're just joining up for the first time, hashtag first timer. If you're watching by rebroadcast, hashtag rebroadcast, yeah? So the Baby Doll Show is a weekly Facebook Live program we also stream live on our youtube channel it is set to equip today's busy urban adult with evidence-based you know proven fertility and health tools to make the best of their journey through parenthood this show is suitable for every busy urban adult if you're an about to wed you're newly wedded you're married you're trying for a child you're trying to overcome a health challenge wherever you are in your health or your fertility journey you can be confident that in this show you'll get the holistic picture and I share my story and the tools that I overcame seven years of fertility with. And I also bring in world leading fertility and health experts on this show to discuss with you face to face, you know, and discuss with you because they have their best interest at heart and in ways that your conventional doctor would never would have told you. You know, so on this show also, you, you know, you get to meet infertility overcomers, infertility warriors, 
that will inspire and strengthen you with their heartfelt stories so that you can be also be strong to strengthen others. If you're just joining us, we're discussing everything about IVF. Click the wow button, show me some love, tell me where you're joining in from, and I'll be engaging with you. So you're welcome to the Baby Dust Show, Dr. Neka. It's such a pleasure to have you on the show today. Yo, thank you, Chika. It's such a blessing for me to be actually part of this program. Thank you also for inspiring ladies all over the world. And I'm um, following your show online, and, you know, we talk about these things a lot. So I'm delighted. Oh, awesome. That's so sweet. Thank you so much for those kind words. It's good to have you here. So let's dive, dive, dive into the subject. So give us a little bit of some background. For how long have you been married? For how long did you try for a child? At what point did you think, okay, I think I, we need some intervention. We need to get help to get pregnant. Please share with us. Okay. Um, so I'm married for 10 and a half years, maybe 11. Um, so basically, you know, I got married just after school, after university, and I directly went um, to France to do my master's and my doctorate. And during the process, we couldn't see as much as normal newly married couples. And after the first three, four months, we say that as we are always, um, you know, we, we usually come to, he comes to France, so I go to Nigeria, or we meet in Turkey, so we decided to just IVF. When my husband came up with the idea, like, let's IVF so that it's better planning because we don't see so often. I was like, I felt like they, they beat me. I was, I was so angry, but looking at it now, logically and more mature, mm. uh, I think it's best that we tried early enough because I can't think of waiting for that long and mm. uh, so forth, trying IVF. So I started um, started doing IVF the first six, seven months. And um, thank God we started early. That's what I can say for yeah. now. <laughs> awesome. You know, I have a checklist on um, research-based reasons why IVF is the only option. So I'm going to add what you just said to my checklist. That means if you're staying yeah. farther away, you guys don't really see. I, I totally agree. Okay, it's one of the reasons to explore such, you know, opportunities. So, so what would be yeah. your first advice, top of your head, you know, if someone meets you and be like, okay, I'm considering IVF, what would be the first thing top of your head that you're going to tell the person to give attention? Once um, somebody's getting married, it's not, even, it's not even right to wait till you want to have a child, but once you are married or you are or to um, have a child soon, it's the most important thing, is, I think, a health check from head to toe, health checkup because we are with the daily stress with the things we it's very likely that we might have underlying issues that we don't even know about basically mm. and also watching your diet and um, your alcohol intake your uh, tobacco intake are also very important mm. awesome awesome absolutely you know someone asked um during the fact finding stage on one of our group fertility coaching program she was like okay i've had um, four failed ivfs and um, the things that you're sharing me this is her saying the things that you're sharing me how come my medical practitioners they are the best in the world how come they never told me that there was something i could do you know to improve my chances for my next IVF? and this couple that i'm talking about struggled struggling struggled yeah because it's in the past they had their ch children now they struggle with fibroids with pop you know sperm parameters they had the female had thyroid dysfunction issues. And so when they engaged me and said, okay, they want to do this the last time and they want to do it well. So, so we went fact finding, we went to find what are the critical issues that were underlying factors, like you mentioned, that could, we could remove, okay, to, to increase our chances for the last trial that they're going to have, you know, because um, they're currently nursing their child. And this was what we did. The fact finding, like you rightly mentioned, is very, very critical. And the earlier it is done, the better, because these things compound, you know, over time. And I would like to also add, there are some critical things that you must note at the back of your mind. First, most, you know, practitioners spend little time these days updating their knowledge base with scientific evidences that are published in medical journals. And there is this erroneous bias that most people have these days. I'm sure you, know, you thought so then, that, you know, that technology is more effective than your body's own, you know, wisdom or that you can fix everything. And it proved that yeah. wrong because it failed the first, second, third, because there were underlying issues, yeah, like you mentioned. 
And also, the third thing I think people should also put at the back of their mind is that technological interventions for infertility have become a multi-billion dollar industry since its inception since 1978, I guess. So the investors and the stakeholders are expecting a return on investment. And this return on investment depends on number of more cycles of egg donor or sperm donor, you know. So I have these strong reservations about this worrying trend happening where women, for you, it was a choice. You chose with your husband to go. Yeah, but my reservation is for women that are headed off like cows towards repeated IVF or donor X cycles before the couple has done the work to optimize their health, to improve their fertility results. That is the reservation that I have, you know, before they are being headed off, oh, you're too old, your eggs are not so good, you, you, why are you wasting time and all that? Because, you know, IVF, which is IUI, IVF, ICUI, they are all the same. All our system reproductive technology or treatments, they are not foolproof science. And me and you have proven that. I had three failed, you had 11 failed. It proves that it's not foolproof, yeah? Which means that there is not a magic bullet. It, it often still fails as a result of, like you said, underlying issues that are not, uh, you know, that are not identified and fixed. So if you're just joining us, tell us where you're joining in from. Hashtag first timer, hashtag we podcast, and let us know where you're joining in from. If this is making sense, give me some love, hit the love button and let me know what you think. Yeah. So, so, so the next question for me, you know, my mission started with the same concerns and anxieties that most women that are struggling with infertility have. When I was about having my first cycle of IVF, you know, I couldn't stop worrying. I was thinking, is this going to work? Would they get enough eggs? Would I have to repeat all this, you know, procedures again? Would I have to, you know, would they produce any embryos that are good enough to transfer? You know, there were so many questions, you know, and thinking that since I was still young, I was thinking IVF could be easy, you know, easy peasy, let's just do it, you know. But the, then the unexpected happened, you know, I was diagnosed then with uterine fibroids and I was told, you know, that um, I had to be on a protocol, you know, be on a protocol to be able to, re, you know, retrieve fewer eggs and all that. And I asked, kept asking if there were particular supplements or food that I could take to increase my chances. And there were no clear answers. And this is what made, inspired me to embark on my mission to find out for myself what scientific research showed. And this is not to suggest that all IVF clinics are behind time when it comes to research. There are very good ones that are really updated on supplements and air quality. You know, some do also stay abreast with research and, you know, recommend cocktail of supplements that align with what we you know we're talking about but these clinics generally don't explain the fascinating story of how each supplement is thought to work or how it's supposed to act you know something like how bpa the toxin that you find in plastics you know i was not told that and i was working with the best of medical practitioners there were you know so 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 this is the reason this was my experience and and this is the experience i i also hear from most people that come and they are told, oh, um, it's a game of numbers. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. Would you share with us how was your experience um, during your process? The first one, the second one, the third one. What's, what was your experience like? Yeah, I was also told how, the, you know, when you think about the numbers, mm. it's, it's scary. When you are all taking the expensive medicines, injections, every time you are actually, the time is coming, your alarm is ringing and you need to inject yourself, you know, taking mm. the hormones, uh, mm. come take, embryos come take, it mm. comes with a lot of anxiety, mm. but um, the most important, you know, this anxiety also brings a lot of desperation. Once yeah. you are desperate, any that does good What's marketing it? can get you. Yeah. So it's always important to find um, that let desperation not come over your mind. You are okay. already using a sign today. So do mm. your research very simply as well. You know, all these supplements, they are mostly not even approved by uh, medical institutions. Yeah, I agree. So very important that um, while they are doing research, look at the approved in under what, um, which countries the uh, medical that is approved. Yeah. Also, you know, for one might not be good for other always check with your practitioner as well Excellent. but importantly you just don't want to take uh, supplements because somebody oh, has a untrue exactly and exactly. You are, has more it makes more mm. damage to you yeah because yeah, often times yeah i hear a lot oh they said this is good for fibroid oh they said this fi this supplement is good for air quality they said 
without looking at your blood works. So, you know, I had a, a, yeah. a, a, a yesterday, last week's show, I really dealt with this, this whole menace of, you know, one size fits all, you know, supplement drug that is going around and all that. And it's so, you know, resonates with what you share. Thank you so much, you know, for sharing that. Because you see, when it comes to the IVF cycle, there's so many opportunities for things to go wrong. And so much is at stake. And you don't want to, you don't want to make mistakes. You want to be sure that you're maximizing your chances. And that's exactly what we're discussing here to improve, you know, your chances. So, so, so share with us, um, what are your lessons learned? What would you, what do you wish someone told you earlier, maybe at your third cycle or at your second cycle? What is one thing that you, you, you wish someone told you earlier? Yeah. So basically, um, it's very important to, um, understand and identify your obstacles mm. and, um, all of them you know it's not an easy process finding out what's actually wrong with you or your partner but mm. also i get is the thing to start so you have to be emotionally ready so yeah. basically once you identify uh, them you you go by one by one the opportunity of getting pregnant while you have that or maybe your partner has it mm. and uh, you know that inaction always increases the number of ideas so we don't want unfailed like so we have to do something about it we can just uh, close our eyes and not knowing what is wrong with us so that's why i really admire the precious educational um, approach you know it's really important to understand the problem and to solve it before you start any IVF process and uh, you know i was diagnosed by endometriosis after my fifth or sixth IVF, yeah. and um you know Search, research were made, but endometriosis is something that comes very quietly. And mm -hmm. when they found that I had a which made me uh, have stage three of endometriosis. Mm -hmm. So, um, my husband always, you know, he likes doing research. He told me that you might have this, you might have that. But, you know, maybe being young, uh, mm -hmm. I just didn't think that any, anything can be wrong with me because mm -hmm. I had a very healthy, a diet. I have been playing professional basketball before. I have been having a very healthy background. Mm. So that's what um, you know. The endometriosis. Well, every day, new things. Science is bringing up new ways. Yeah. Like now, uh, 125 uh, blood test to check the protein level in your uh, in your body. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, 25 is almost the most valid way of fine enough endometriosis particularly but you know there is also yeah i had the laparoscopy if they might have to go in to check it basically yeah. because it doesn't come out in ultrasound yeah every other team has their own they have different approaches to find different things so yeah. it's really important that we identify that and mm. also find programs that so it's good for you but again uh so precious the detox program you know you talk to me about it and i read testimonies about it it's really important fertility coaching programs you know giving that sort of dealing with people around you can't just give decisions here or see one or two people and you know that's like what desperation does yeah important exactly. to do enough research and um with your food with your diet with the stress level around you a certain level of detox definitely would increase the chances and make it happen faster yeah absolutely you know what you, you shared is it's 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 so deep in various ways because you see um i often tell people you don't know what you don't know and there is so much to gain if you first are able to identify what the fundamental issues are this whole thing you know that we're doing the detox program the fertility coaching program that we're doing so precious they command utter <laughs> absolute commitment absolute commitment if, if you you know someone was asking yeah, on one of our blogs today does it mean the detox program will get me pregnant i'm like no of course not it's not gonna get you pregnant because <laughs> it's not a magic pill we're not, i'm not offering you a magic pill that will get you pregnant that is not what we do it's a program a program got you to where you were a part of yeah. lifestyle some environmental toxins were in your environment something created it. you were not born with it okay so a program needs to we align and remove those things okay not a quick fix so i often say if you're not 
pregnant by the end of the free seven day fertility day or the detox program, you need to dig more. There are some people after the detox program, they are bam, they are they conceive and they are fine. But there are people that they, their body needs some more help. You know, you need to dig deeper. It means you can't be wasting time anyone and going to your sorry state and be like, oh, it did not work for me. You know, that six to 12 months of your fertility time that you're using to delay, don't, you know, thinking that you can try to figure it out yourself. Like you might mention, you need to find the right programs, you know, trying to fix the, this puzzle by yourself. There's no shame in it. There's no guilt in it. You, you can't fix you. You need help. You need intervention. You need a community. You need everybody needs to try it. Okay, we all need each other. There's no shame in it. You know, there's no, um, we are past all that. Okay, everybody have their struggles and that's why we lean on each other. So you need to figure out what the problem is. And that is the educational approach that we, we take in So Precious. We demand answers. Why is the fibroids regrowing? Why is the endometriosis regrowing even after surgery? Something is enabling the growth. We need to find that question, answer to that question. So you need the proper help and the support. You know to give you the best you know the best possible chance you know before you even explore either natural or ivf okay so so and in our program we don't take up with we say that with our program is not for everyone we find the people that is best suited for people that are ready to say oh enough is enough because if you've been trying for over two years that you know that's the difference for some people between having a baby or not you know you have to do the due process for every miscarriage for every failed cycle in your ivf you know is a delayed already four to six months financially and emotionally like you know like neck and shed so people get stuck when they don't know what they don't know people, that's where people get stuck. so you can't solve yeah. a problem at the same level that it was created and i'm going to repeat what i just said for some people you can't solve a problem at the same level it was created true so so there's so much you can do to improve your chances you know, there's so much you can do to discover things, you know, you know, without let, letting go of the pressure, you know, and take a deep breath. Let go of the, you know, the, the pains of the past. It did not work. It did not. You need to move forward. And that was the, you know, the inspiration that got you going beyond five and six and seven, because you knew you got to have this baby. You know, that was the inspiration. That was, that was what kept you going day after day. So, so. It's important, you know, that the concept of, I call it the critical minor factors, we're talking about things that obstruct conception, like your thyroid function, PCOS, stem nephrology, heat of overweight, fibroids. These are all critical factors. They are the stumbling blocks. And until they are removed, they reduce the chances, okay? I, I, there's an analogy that is research-based that I often share, you know, that, you know, at a woman's peak time, when everything is perfect, there is no issue. Three months is your time to pregnant. But when you add minor critical yeah. factors, it reduces it from 20% chance of conception in any given cycle to about 5%. What I mean is the, 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 the perfect woman that doesn't have any issue in every given cycle has 20% chance of conception in every menstrual cycle. So if you're adding maybe fibroids or PCOS, or the sperm is not good enough, or the sperm morphology needs support, or she's a little bit obese. Every one of these critical factors are reducing that 20% in every critical. So you see that the fertility window is so small that you can't ignore these things and just be like, you know, what will be, will be. You've got to put in the work. And that's what we're discussing, you know, in this show. And thank you so much for, for, for what you're sharing, you know, with us. So, so um, uh, what are there cases where someone could say IVF is the only option, Doctor Neka? Are there cases where you could say, "Oh, it's the only option. There's nothing else I can do." Are there such cases? Well, people have to agree that science is something amazing. Like, there's no need to run away from science. We are in 2021, and it's just getting better. I really, there's no need to run away from it or close our eyes for it. Um, for me. Um, mm. And you know, also having a right dog doing this journey is very important. Somewhere that has the, the best deal of you, best interest of you, just the way you say, so uh, it's very important. I had, because it was a long process for me to find a right doctor in mm. the journey. Mm. And he has been amazing, mm. amazing. And I think, I think successful IVF process also would say that their doctor yeah. would not because they so only true. had thoughts so they were involved in the process yeah. and um, that I really think that any scientific intervention is necessary mm. there is no need for it because without uh, you know, without 
um, also without good research, all these IVFs, uh, programs, even surrogacy would be a waste of yeah. money, energy, time. And so energy. that's again, yeah. again, good research and addressing the problems. What is the yeah. identifying the problem you or your partner might have? Sometimes mm. it's just, sometimes it's just, um, um, it's not something as deep as they take. So it's really yeah. having a calm session and a long, it might be a long process, but identifying is really important. Yeah. Excellent. Absolutely. I, I totally, totally agree. And I resonate with you when you said working with the right practitioner, because, you know, like I mentioned, um, that is a trillion dollar business, you know, and so you need to be sure that the practitioner you're working with has your best interest at heart. Absolutely. So, so tell us, how were you able to keep up the faith? 11 trials, girl, to become a mummy. How were you able to keep up? What was, what kept you going? Okay, um, I mean, I hate saying this because I always say women empowerment is important. You need to be happy with yourself and all. But no matter what, I was blessed with an understanding and supportive partner. My husband has been more focused on my emotions than mm. even me trying. And oh. you can imagine how people under this more. So I feel like those kind of people is not a, it's not, not everybody that is built to support and motivate others it doesn't show them that they are bad but it's important also to find that surrounding around you to find okay. people that will understand that go through similar things so that you can share and learn from them as well so um in my own i had a and my family my in-laws never pressurized me my husband was very supportive i had i chose to have people around me that is supportive yeah. and you know that your emotional power comes in when you choose people not they choose to be with Excellent. you people that, absolutely people that people that will say the right words at the right time because no matter what we are quite emotional at that at mm -hmm. that time and also in angelic that's what we try to also achieve mm -hmm. we have a circle we just talk about our mental health during this process but nothing else i mean yeah. so if we know each other other than the meetings and sometimes you just feel more comfortable to talk to people that are not your friends in social time we are yeah. very close with you, but the, you don't just just about anything but you yeah. need to support emotionally and mentally and having such a, a circle is really important fantastic fantastic and, and angelic is such a support system i've been i've been at the meetings and it's such a powerful oral it's such empowering My talk about God doesn't mean that he doesn't have a great part. I mean, without him, obviously not able, but um, also believe that it's not only prayers. You know, mm -hmm. God gave you a system. He gave you brain. He gave you science. He gave you yeah. heart. So it's really important to explore all of them. So true. Brain as well. but, yeah, we, we, ha we always have the best options. I always tell people, if your spouse is not, is not supportive, be sure that you're not looking well enough. If you open your eyes and look around, you will see that God always brings to you opportunities to meet with people that will inspire you. So you have to pick, like you said, you have to pick the right energy. You have to pick the right circle of friends because your mental health is important. It matters the kind of people you're listening to. It matters the kind of environment you surround with. If, if you, you have the right to, to say no and walk away from things that are not inspiring, that are disheartening, that are discouraging, you have the right to. And it's very, very important also. Thank you so much for sharing those. So for those that will say, oh, my husband is not as supportive, it is not a disadvantage. You have So Precious, you have Angelic, you have so many. There are so many, you know, real heart to heart you know, support systems out there that are ready to, you know, someone was sharing with me that she said, you know, I'm the child for a child for six years. And trust me, if there's any fertility platform on the face of the earth, I am there. But I've not seen anyone as as so touching and as intimate and connected, like so precious. And and for me, that's that means a whole deal. You know, that that's that that that's that means a whole deal because people people um are in need of this thing. People need community no matter who you are no matter where you're coming from you need a tribe you need you know the right connection and the right community that's that's absolutely you know awesome you see so 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 averagely when when couples 
visit their GP, that's a general practitioner for their allotted maybe seven minutes consultation for TTC. They are not asked asking the right questions about lifestyle they are not giving any counsel i don't know about you but i wasn't given you know i wasn't given any lifestyle guidance when i was going to see my gp for ttc i wasn't told effective ways to improve fertility outcomes this is the norm so so for me i wasn't asked i was just referred you know is it that you go for IVF or icsi or iui you know and told to report at the next start of cycle so at that point for most people they panic and they jump into this ever-growing assisted reproduction funnel like you mentioned where the, the the person is feeling desperate you know from there you know they start thinking okay what next so and when the outcome is a negative pregnancy test many are told oh better luck next time it's a game of numbers let's next cycle and all that you know so some couples eventually conceive this way there are people that the first idea they are good okay however for most more than 65 percent are given the average you know success rate of 30 to 50 percent you know which also you know goes into emotional and physical and financial turmoil so so i would like us to discuss a little bit about the cost of IVF. What would you say is the cost of IVF? Because a lot of time when people are thinking cost of IVF, people that have not been on that part, they're thinking the money. Please share with us, what would you say is the cost? What um, does it cost? <laughs> that is the wrong view because, of course, the financial implication is so high. But, um, you know, there's also IVF center. It's a big sector, as you say. There is IVF for fertility clinics mm -hmm. in every range for everybody. And... Mm -hmm. um, but the problem is the cost, the physical cost, the emotional cost of it, yeah. which you can never get a really back, you know. It's it's really it's really um, it's really heavy on, on a woman. Yeah. Because um, you know, this medicine plays with your heart, plays mm. with your emotions, plays with oh, your health. No, even you. IVS has a lot of basically your self-esteem, your relationship with your partner, yeah. um, you know, social pressure, a lot of costs that come with it, basically. So they in for different people, different levels all the way. But yeah. um, I mean, can I say it? Uh, you know, no matter what, what mm -hmm. we dream is, what is kind of is in our hands, even during the process, mm -hmm. it's important to be um, faithful, emotionally strong. And mm -hmm. by that, um, just we, we just go through it, it in an easier way but as i said more than financial it has so much uh, other um other uh, cost in a, in a body in a relationship yeah. in a person yeah awesome awesome so we'll take some questions from our blogs because i told my community that you're coming online so some of them shared some questions and i'm going to just pick them so one of the questions is when is the right time to consider ivf when is IVF a wrong move? Okay, so so I'll just um, give the the response straight up. So um, the asopspermia, or in the case of a man, or where we have cases of totally blocked tube, totally blocked tube, IVF was invent, invented for such cases. IVF was made for tubal infertility, where the tubes are completely blocked or they are missing from birth, or cases of um, diminished ovarian reserve. You know, so 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 get the foundation right before starting any conception attempts, okay. And also cases of um, chromosomal um, abnormalities when it has to do with um, diminished um, ovarian reserve. These are the single most important cause of early miscarriages and failed IVF cycles. So it's also the reason why it takes older yeah. women longer to conceive. So this can be corrected with the right herbal supplement. Like um, Dr. Neck, I mentioned, you need to be sure that your supplementation plan is not something you bought from the shelf of the pharmacy. You need to be sure that it's addressing what you, you need it to fix. You know, so I, I had um, a pregnancy announcement on one of our fertility blocks from a couple that was tagged unexplainable infertility. And in the fertility program, I, I explained to them that it's a very lazy reason to head someone off to IVF. What do you mean by unexplainable fertility? What do you mean you cannot explain it? It's a very lazy one because first you check some silent intangible things like you mentioned earlier, like stress, like sleep quality, hormonal imbalances. This can be intangibles. You can't see them really unless you look critically or you give attention to lifestyle. So, and the moment and the, 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 that also, you know, this um, uh, unexplained uh, 
infertility. So much used by clinics, and it's also quite depressing. It's so depressing because yeah. there is nothing more worse than knowing what you know how bad it be. So it's, we really have to motivate ladies to not yeah. take that as an answer. You know, no yeah. matter what we are fee for just for these doctors. And yeah. unfortunately, whether they like it or not, they are obliged to explain us what the problem they think it might be and what is next for Absolutely. Surgery. Absolutely. It's a very lazy way to ship someone off to IVF. Or to tell someone, oh, you're too old to have a baby, there's mm. nothing you can do. You know, like the couple I was just talking about in our <laughs> program, that was the result she came with. And I told her, when I told her to, because that's like the concrete and the foundational thing we do, we look at your blood works. I have a team of medical practitioners that I work with that have your best interest at heart. So when we looked at the blood works, we found out that there was a hormonal imbalance at play. And I'm mm. like, oh, um, there was thyroid dysfunction. This is glaring. The report is already showing thyroid function support needed. It's screaming. It. And they already tagged this unexplainable infertility. What do you mean unexplainable infertility? And immediately we're able to address those hormones, you know, using lifestyle intervention. The body was reset. And in less than four months, she conceived and carried to term. They have their baby right now. So so, so it's a, it's a very lazy way, you know, like you mentioned, of, of of taking you know the easy way out because you know there are some couples i i agree that will never conceive without ivf like i mentioned there are some couples like that like um they completely block tubes and all that but this is a fact but ignoring obstacles to optimal fertility and health and you know thinking that certain issues can be bypassed by technology is never a good idea you know it's never yeah. a good idea so if you want the most you know, direct route to have a baby, even if it feels like it's a long, slow journey, I assure you that you must first address all the relevant impediments in your, you know, to get to your healthiest possible self before applying any technology. Right. Like in Neka shared, there are so much more, you know, cost more than just finances. So you want to be sure that it is worth doing well, yeah? Because yes, definitely. Mind of critical factors, they don't just impact, you know, chances of conception. I used to think we're just, you know, chance of conceive they, they didn't just impact your chance to conceive but also embryo development they in chance they impact in, in, in you know implantation they impact keeping a healthy pregnancy to term okay so it's not enough to get pregnant like mm -hmm. I was telling you. it's about having a healthy mom get a healthy baby so and and when you have failed ideas and thinking mm -hmm. these are not just transfers these are full complete IVF cycles with full stimulation throughout and nobody dictated that this lady yeah. needed to take a break and fix the root causes and the energy, you know, and all that. So, 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 so if it's not working, you might have to re-strategize. I find out that people are not getting well investigated properly. Like you mentioned, the, the unexplainable infertility is so rampant. I know how many test results that come with. I said, what is this nonsense? What do you mean? Am I paying you to tell me that it's unexplainable? I'm paying you for you to explain it to me. Just for me. They should, they should forbid to have such an answer, actually. Yes. It, they practically I, they shouldn't, shouldn't answer. It shouldn't yeah, be allowed. I see this the other so often, Neka. I see this other so often. It's so disheartening. What are you telling the woman to do? To go home and and do what? And and I'm grateful, you know, that, you know, that we are able to, over and over again, you know, prove that, that um, these things can be corrected. That there is no such thing as, um, you know, unexplainable infertility and all that so it's 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 so it's it, i'm a total fan of technology like i always say i'm a total fan of ivf but i'm about being used at the right time for the right person in the right way i'm not a fan of True. you cannot conceive it the only option is unexplainable infertility there's nothing they can do you know what can we do proactively you know what can we do it proactively and this is what we do in our session so another frequently asked question that came you know, um, was why does IVF fail? Am I the problem or is it sheer bad luck? So I'll just answer that straight up. IVF is failing, at, if you've been listening to us, because minor critical factors are not addressed. Dr. Neka has talked extensively on this. It's not about bad luck. It's not about number game. It's not about try again. Um, you know, keep trying until the body gets exhausted on so many levels. So I recommend IVF when it's absolutely necessary and not as a way to bypass unexplainable infertility or a disordered biochemistry you know so 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 that is the reason why it fails and in our fertility coaching programs couples are discovered that there is a low lot that they have control over 
in their outcome. There is a whole lot that they can do, you know, to improve their chances. And the best way to avoid all this emotional and financial burden of fertility treatment, the roller coaster of the emotion, is to ensure that your, you and your partner create the very best version of your health before conception attempts. If you need to take a break, take a break and do what you need to do. You know, you're already sacrificing a lot, so they yeah, so it's what doing well. What just yeah, it's what doing well, especially you know when other treatments have previously failed. It means there is a gap in the puzzle that needs to be you know to be fixed. Yeah. So so one last question. He said, I have had a failed um, second IVF cycle that caused huge ovarian cysts which I have never had before. Is there anything I can do to prevent this in future cycles? Okay, simply the best way to prevent this in future cycles is to reduce the number of cycles that you need to have in order to have a pregnancy. What we can do is to double your chances of having a pregnant, you know, a healthy pregnancy is through IVF is to fix the, you know, the, the issues that we are discussing. Sometimes that's the way the body responds. There's nothing you can do about it. It's something that we need to look at improve and optimize at its best okay we need to help your body yeah. to detoxify we need to help your body to clear out the hormones that are not balanced in a better way so that you can get you know to ensure that you don't have future cysts because something is creating it you know but if it may be also that during your ivf cycle that you are hyper stimulated and it wasn't that you had a huge cyst but you had more eggs than what should be ideal so there are different situations that can play a role here. And I guess that's the thing that needs to be looked at and addressed. And you might consider enrolling in our, you know, fertility coaching programs to have a deep look at what we're dealing with. So um, we have talked about a lot and this is the much we can take today. It's been such joy to have you here. So, so Thank excited. Thank you so much for having <laughs> us. <laughs> I wish we could do this again and again. There's so much to discuss in this subject and we need to do this more often because there's some people, so many people that need to hear this. You know, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And, uh, you know, it's such an important thing that um, you are doing this because people tend to go under desperation. They like going yeah. online to see yeah. what it is. So it's very important to give right information to people. Thanks yeah. a lot. Okay? Thank you, darling. Thank you for being here. All right. Thank you, everyone, for listening in. Till we meet next time, keep living healthy and keep giving the world your best. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye, darling. Yeah, bye.